The new Xbox is coming and it's going to be a beast. It's going to have insane horsepower and incredible graphics capabilities. But you know what I'm most excited about with the new Xbox? is the fact that it's going to have backwards compatibility and Microsoft is promising extensive backwards compatibility across four generations of Xbox consoles. And that's incredible because we shouldn't lose our ability to play awesome games to history. Now, Microsoft has made some killer consoles, but I would say that this is especially true with the Xbox 360. The company killed off the original groundbreaking Xbox console earlier than expected after just four years on the market and they jumped into the next generation with the 360 in November of 2005. They built a lot of hype to launch the new machine. They had massive stage presentations and star-studded E3 parties. Xbox 360 looks amazing. But most importantly, Microsoft learned a lot from the first Xbox and did two things very well. Number one, they doubled down on their online service, Xbox Live, and offered gamers tons of games and great value there. And number two, by coming to the market early with powerful hardware that was relatively easy to make games on, Microsoft was able to get a lot of developers on board and a lot of publishers chose the Xbox 360 as their lead platform. Well, Xbox 360 is the most powerful next generation console out there. Uh, it's under the hood, the thing is just a monster. It's got three 3.2 gigahertz cores. It's gonna power some amazing uh, AI and physics technologies and games that we've never seen before. It's got a graphics processor from ATI that uh, is unlike anything you've ever seen. So high definition graphics are going to blow off the screen. Consequently, there was a massive flood of games published for the Xbox 360 and many of those games have become beacons representing the best that this industry is capable of. A world of games that are fueled by high definition graphics and sound. So I've got another first five list for you, my first five favorite games for the Xbox 360, but I've got to do things a little bit differently here because of that backwards compatibility equation. So I've got three first five lists regarding the Xbox 360. Number one is my first five favorite games to play on Xbox 360, simple. Number two is my first five favorite Xbox 360 games that have been ported or remastered to this current generation. And number three, I think is the most important list, it's Xbox 360 games that have not been ported or remastered. So if you want to play these games, you'd have to actually find them and find an Xbox 360. So let's get started with my first five favorite games that I played on the Xbox 360. I'm going to cheat a little bit though because some of these games are part of series or they had multiple releases and it's just really hard to separate all of them so there's that little caveat right there number five is rock band which was an incredible experience on xbox 360 i had all the plastic instruments i had them all downstairs in my cave which didn't really fit them all but i had them i had them all set up and then i'd squeeze people in and we'd play every once in a while and then i'd take them all upstairs when i had more people over and we play in the living room and i freaking loved it i loved what Harmonix was able to do with getting all kinds of music companies involved and licensing all kinds of great tracks and letting people get up and sing and play guitar and do the drums just incredible and of course you know it was always funny because you'd be at a party and I'd be setting up the uh, the rock band and getting everybody to play and having to tr kind of teach everybody how to play and say don't touch that don't touch that button you know that deal where you've got to be the guy that basically tech support for rock band. But once everybody gelled and were playing songs together, it was magic, something I'll never forget. And it really, I feel like it's really locked to that generation. That is specifically for me on the Xbox 360, incredible franchise. Number four is Mass Effect, and I'm saying one through three, because even though Mass Effect 2 is probably the best of the games that you can play on Xbox 360, one and three are great too, and I loved, uh, you know, what Bio was, it was able to do with this massive sprawling space RPG, really challenging our preconceptions of what an RPG was, adding all kinds of great action elements into it, and all kinds of great interpersonal relationship elements, a very cool gameplay experience, lots of groundbreaking development in there, and I really hope that by Bioware and Electronic Arts find their way back to Mass Effect and deliver games at this kind of quality bar again. Mass Effect 1 through 3 is number 4 on my list. Help me out here, Shepard. Number 3 on my list is another RPG, and it's kind of Bethesda's answer to all of the great successes that Bioware was having with Dragon Age and with Mass Effect. This is Skyrim. It's The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Positively breathtaking when we all saw it running on Xbox 360 hardware. It was magic. The idea of this open world world to explore and all these different characters that you could be and all of these different characters that you can encounter and the spells you could learn and the powers that you could equip yourself with the armor that you could find all the loot you would get just absolutely magnificent hey you 
finally awake. Now, number two for me is Red Dead Redemption. This was Rockstar's, I think, open world magnum opus in the Xbox 360 era. Played it on the 360 and I freaking loved it. I still remember the chills down my spine as I was galloping through the desert and got into Mexico and the music started to pipe up and there was like this folk singer playing along with me and I was just, it was so cinematic and so transportive, so captivating. You know, it's something that I'll, I'll remember forever. I'll also remember the, the sensation and the feel of, uh, you know, the, the melancholy of completing the game and recognizing how much the characters meant to me. Just what an amazing achievement Rockstar had crafted for us. Now, number one for me is going to be the Batman Arkham games, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, and I can't really separate them, even though I would say City is the better game because it's a little bit more robust, there's more to do, and the whole city to kind of explore, the sort of rogues gallery of bad guys that you're going to encounter and all the nooks and crannies, and Catwoman's a part of it as well, but City doesn't exist without the success of Asylum, and I called it when I saw Asylum at the previous E3 before it launched that this was going to be the superhero game that was going to change everything. Much like the beginning of the MCU or when Spider-Man came out or something like that, it felt like superhero video games had turned a corner and we were about to see some stuff at the highest pedigree. And honestly, there was a curse around Batman that broke my heart for so long. And it was just great to see that that was lifted when Rocksteady developed the absolutely incredible Batman Arkham Asylum and then killed it on City. Those two games were incredible. You become what you've always fought against and I will stop you. All right, moving on to my next first five with regards to the Xbox 360. These are Xbox 360 games that were remastered for the current generation of consoles, whether you picked it up for the Xbox One. Some of these are also on the PS4 as well. And I'm gonna start with number five, which is the Gears of War Ultimate Edition. This was a 4K beautified remake of the original Gears of War. And then what Microsoft did is they threw in all of the previous Gears games as well. So you got a nice bundle of Gears content. This, of course, was leading up to the launch of Gears 4 and sort of revitalizing the Gears franchise for the modern machine. It was incredible to go back in time and play all of these games at the fidelity that we had never seen before. The Coalition worked on the upgrades and the updates, and they did a fantastic job. Loved the Gears Ultimate Edition. Number four is a game we've already seen. It's the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, but this is the special edition with the enhanced visuals, taking everything up to 4K again and making everything just look a lot more beautific and all of the texture detail and all the finesse was applied to this game. And it felt like when we played Skyrim on the Xbox 360, it was incredible and it was clearly state of the art, but it also felt like this was a game kind of custom made for more enhanced hardware. And so it was a better fit when I checked it out on the Xbox One. It just made a lot more sense to upscale, especially in the Xbox One X with all of the 4K enhancements. Fantastic remaster. <laughs> Number three is the Assassin's Creed Ezio collection. Ezio was a seminal character, and you get three games here. You get Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations, and there's just a lot of story to kind of digest and a lot of areas to uncover. The uh, Assassin's Creed games flourished on Xbox 360, really showcasing what next gen at that time meant. You know, the open world quality, the idea that there were just little finger holds for all of our lead characters in Assassin's Creed to be able to stick their fingers and their toes into and do all of this, these amazing parkour clambers up on top of buildings and jumps and leaps. And how do they survive the fall into the little bale of hay? How do they do that? <laughs> You can get completely lost in the Assassin's Creed lore, and I think it was best exemplified through Ezio's story. Wonderful, wonderful collection. Number two on my list of remastered Xbox 360 games is a whole collection. It's the Halo Master Chief Collection, and yes, I know it's gone through a lot of trouble, you know, as it still continues to evolve. Uh, Halo Reach was recently released and upgraded like crazy, but it's pretty hard to dismiss this collection of all of this Halo goodness, you know, and all of these upgraded graphics, and it's just really cool to have this 
on my Xbox One and I can dive in and dip into this Halo madness anytime that I want to. I love the Halo games. They're incredibly important to this industry and obviously incredibly important to Xbox. And I think they may have bitten off more than they could chew with all of the multiplayer features and all of the functionality that they wanted to squeeze into the Master Chief Collection, but it's undeniably a great value. And especially if you're not super concerned about you know competing online, you can still have a tremendously fun time playing through all of the stories offline terrific games and it's a great way to celebrate all the you know the magic that is halo now number one on my list of remastered xbox 360 games that made it to the current gen systems and has sold like crazy is grand theft auto 5 this was a game that was again i felt a little bit too big for the last generation it's almost hard to reconcile that grand theft auto 5 ran on the playstation 3 and it ran on the xbox 360 it was so tuned to almost perfection, I would say pretty damn close to perfection for the Xbox One and for the PlayStation 4. Didn't like every twist and turn that Rockstar developed for me, but it was an astounding experience. And also the controls were perfect and all the different vehicles that you could lift and start racing around in and the missions that you would go on. And of course, there's this extensive Grand Theft Auto online service that has just been flourishing and you know entertaining millions and millions of people since this game has launched. It was a wonderful achievement and it was I think also another signifier that it's going to become harder and harder for us to identify when these games launched and what generation of console these games are for. This is a perfect example of a, a game that can cross many, many years and eras and wouldn't be surprised if Rockstar does some kind of super enhancement for the new Xbox and the new PlayStation. Okay, so now we've come to my most interesting first five. These are games that are not backwards compatible, meaning you can't play them on the Xbox One platforms, and presumably they won't be backwards compatible with the future Xbox platforms. So you, pro you would need to go and hunt down an Xbox 360 if you don't have one already, and you would also need to go and hunt down the software to play on this 360, but maybe you can buy them on the online store. I'm not sure. I have these discs. I have narrowed it down to my first five, that are not backwards compatible and they haven't been remastered for anything. So you gotta play them on a 360. Some of these are on PlayStation 3 as well. We're gonna start with number five, which is Captain America Super Soldier. You've heard me talk about this game in Buried Treasure segments before, probably multiple times because I freaking love this game and I go back to it all the time. It's definitely a lift on what Rocksteady was doing with Arkham. Lots of mechanics and lots of ideas borrowed from Rocksteady's design, which was fine. You know, you've got like, Captain Vision and the way that you can leap over bad guys and pull off all kinds of acrobatic moves and fight with everybody and do some stealthy takedowns and stuff like that. All, all of it we had kind of seen a little bit of before with Batman, but the Captain America World War II taking out Nazis, just so ridiculously fun. And Next Level just did a phenomenal job. They really nailed the feel and the flow of Captain America. And I heard that Chris Evans was so impressed by the acrobatics of his character in this this game that they incorporated some of the moves that he was seeing in the game into the Winter Soldier and they made Cap a lot more dynamic as they went along with the movies and they were inspired by the game which is just incredible to me. Number four is going to be X-Men Origins Wolverine and you may notice a little bit of a theme here because I do like superheroes and I like superhero games, especially when they're as crazy and as fun as this. Now, the big thing about X-Men Origins Wolverine is that it's incredibly violent, but it's so satisfying. And it's really not the violence that's satisfying, it's the unleashed, uncaged Logan that we get in this game. And it's modeled after Hugh Jackman. Everyone calls me Wolverine. This works like a bit of a time capsule that, you know, he's moved on from the role, but here you can kind of get a Logan that is as dangerous as his last performance in Logan as Wolverine. And it's so crazy addictive, you know. It's a little bit influenced by God of War and old brawlers like Streets of Rage and the, the Capcom fighters and stuff. But, God, it's just really crazy fun. And, of course, you're going to see ridiculous carnage. All kinds of limbs go flying, heads go flying. And I think it serves as a great reminder that superhero games can be fantastic. <laughs> 
I think my number three also suggests that in an even grander way, and that is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. This was developed by Beanox and published by Activision. I still have this on my PC, but this is a hard game to track down, but it's so worth it, especially in the wake of the incredible Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. You get to play as a variety of different Spider-Men from different eras. You get the Spider-Man Noir, you get Spider-Man 2099, you get the black suit Spider-Man, and then you get the ultimate Spider-Man, the red and blue Spider-Man. The mechanics are slightly different for each of the heroes, but there are some things that sort of thread them no pun intended, together, and it's just really fun. You're like uncovering and solving a mystery. It feels very much like a comic story. I think Dan Slott was the uh, writer of this. Cool. So much Spider-Man love was poured into this game. They did a great job. Hey, I'll keep dishing it out if you oh. keep Now, number two for me is uh, a surprise. I'm surprised that we haven't got a remaster of this game and that you can't play it on Xbox One or PlayStation 4. It's Max Payne 3, developed by Rockstar Vancouver, I believe. God, this game is so stylish. It's so cool and dark and twisted. Faces get shot to hell and people get shot in the stomach and they go flipping and flying. You know the deal with Max Payne. He's got the bullet time jumps and it's just so sleek and so cool. I want this game up -rezzed. And I want a Max Payne 4, damn it. It would be great to see this character again. Maybe we're gonna see Max Payne come back in the next generation of machines. But Max Payne 3 is a treasure and you gotta hunt that down. Now, number one for me is probably gonna surprise a bunch of you out there, but I freaking adore the Saboteur. I love this game, and I didn't at first, but this is one of those games that the more you play, the more you get out of it, and I, I appreciated the concept of this rogue Irish guy in Paris fighting against the Nazis, and what you do in the game is you sabotage all kinds of installations, and you're just shooting Nazis left and right and blowing up their towers and their flags and their hideouts and walking away. <laughs> And in the background, just see stuff blowing up behind you. It's so damn cool. Paris is such a beautiful city, and it's filled with lights, and it's filled with color, but not when the Nazis take over. So all of the Nazi areas are in black and white, and that you bring them back to life as you start to destroy their territory and take out as many Nazis as you can. You know, it's a mature-rated game, and it's got some risque stuff in it, but the core sort of elements of the play are so fun. You know, it's certainly not as sleekly designed in terms of climbing up the walls as Assassin's Creed, and the combat and the, and the car controls aren't as tight as something as Grand Theft Auto V. But God, man, this is so fun and so fresh feeling and so unique. And it sort of came out and it appealed to people that love like Indiana Jones movies and love the first Captain America movie. Hello. It just had this really cool kind of kick-ass sense about itself. And I don't think it's received nearly enough love over the years. Definitely check this game out any way that you can. I believe there is a PC version of this game as well. God, I love the Saboteur. And that is why it is number one on my first five list for the Xbox 360. <laughs> So there you go. There's 15 games or so, but you know, the, the library for the Xbox 360 is enormous. I'd love to hear some of your first five lists down below in the comments. Don't forget that you can hit that like button. You can hit that subscribe button and that little bell if you wanna be notified. Thank you to all of our EPN members out there. We're gonna be back with lots and lots of features and lots of cool new content. So we'll see you soon. And until we do, play forever.